Hello, so thank you very much for the introduction. Um, as, as you already said, uh, I'm a PhD student at the Diabetes Research Centre at the University of Leicester, and today I will be uh, presenting my research on uh, progression to type 2 diabetes in women who had gestational diabetes, and I'm really excited to be joining this uh, meeting today. I'll start with a bit of background. So. Um, gestational diabetes is um, glucose intolerance with onset or first diagnosis during the second or third trimester of pregnancy, which is definitely not either pre-existing type 1 or type 2 diabetes. And the previous diagnosis of gestational diabetes is an established risk factor for developing uh, type 2 diabetes in later life. And while women with gestational diabetes are recommended to undergo screening for type 2 diabetes uh, following birth, um, studies have shown that the rates of postpartum screening for type 2 diabetes in women who had gestational diabetes are currently low, and only half of them uh, do attend screening in real life. And uh, these findings are consistent uh, throughout the world. So previous systematic reviews and meta-analysis uh, have, have highlighted uh, the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes following a diagnosis of gestational diabetes. In 2002, there was a systematic review by Kim et al. that found a cumulative incidence of type 2 diabetes that was between 2.6% to over 70%, and it was highest in the five, uh, post first five postpartum years. A few years later, a systematic review by Bellamy et al. found a sevenfold high risk of type 2 diabetes in women who had gestational diabetes uh, compared to those with a normal glycemic pregnancy. And uh, finally, there was a systematic review and meta-analysis in 2017 uh, that investigated screening rates and the prevalence of type 2 diabetes in Asian women, and they found uh, an incidence between 2.8 and 58% in women who had gestational diabetes. So over recent decades, the demography of pregnant women has undergone uh, a number of changes as women tend to give birth at a more advanced age, while obesity rates are also on the rise. And both these factors have led to a rise in the global prevalence of gestational diabetes. From a public health perspective, this increased prevalence of gestational diabetes could potentially contribute to the rising global health burden of both obesity and type 2 diabetes. And in response to this situation, uh, the guidelines for the screening and diagnosis of gestational diabetes and type 2 diabetes have undergone several changes. And all these issues uh, highlight the need for uh, more recent evidence. So this systematic review and meta-analysis aim to investigate progression rates and factors that determine progression to type 2 diabetes, looking at women with gestational diabetes and comparing them where, to those with a normal glycemic pregnancy in ethnically diverse populations and over a longer follow-up period, and all this uh, using the most recent evidence. So in terms of the methods, uh, this systematic review and meta-analysis was registered on Prospero, uh, we searched both Medline and Embase through the Ovid interface from January 2000 to December 2019 for studies published in English and conducted on humans. We were interested in observational studies that investigated progression to type 2 diabetes and the eligibility criteria were uh, postpartum follow-up for at least 12 months, incident physician-based diabetes diagnosis, both gestational and type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes uh, progression being reported separately and not combined with either impaired fasting glucose or impaired glucose tolerance. And finally, studies that had both a group of women with gestational diabetes and a control group. Any cross-sectional studies, um, studies uh, on uh, postpartum screening but not type 2 diabetes progression, conference proceedings, uh, guidelines, dissertations, commentaries and letters, uh, were excluded from uh, this systematic review and meta-analysis. For the study quality, um, we used the Newcastle Ottawa scale for cohort studies, while publication bias was assessed with PEGS and Eggers tests. 
For the statistical analysis, uh, when time to this progression was reported at a number of different time points, we used the results from the longest follow-up point. We fitted random effects meta-analysis models using the Dersimonian and Light method, and heterogeneity was assessed with the I-squared statistic. The study standard errors were estimated for the long transformed uh, relative risk, and results were then pulled on the log scale. When there were zero events of type 2 diabetes progression in any of the groups, uh, we applied the continuity correction using the default value of 0.5 to avoid any divisions by zero. And finally, any additional parameters were assessed by either subgroup or meta regression analysis. So this is a flow diagram of the literature search where you can see uh, the records are identified through database uh, screening um, from both Medline and Embase with duplicates removed, um, titles and abstracts screened, studies not meeting selection criteria, uh, studies assessed for eligibility using the full text, um, reasons for exclusion with the full text, uh, studies um, added from um, the hand searching of reference lists of relevant systematic reviews, and finally, um, the total number of uh, studies that were included in the meta-analysis. So this is a table of study characteristics that's um, here for your reference. It's, it's the uh, total number of studies that were included in the meta-analysis with um, some basic information, including study design, country of origin, criteria for gestational and type 2 diabetes, number of women followed up in each of the groups, um, length of follow-up, mean um, age of um, study participants, and ethnicity. So overall, this systematic review and meta-analysis uh, found that women with gestational diabetes are almost 10 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes compared to those with a normal glycemic pregnancy. As you can see here, so the pulled um, estimate with a 95 confidence interval. Um, in the forest plot, you can see as well that each study demonstrated that the risk was greater in women uh, with gestational diabetes. And as uh, we observed significant uh, heterogeneity uh, in the overall effect estimate, we decided to perform um, subgroup and meta regression analysis to explore potential sources. So first, we performed subgroup analysis uh, by um, study level ethnicity, and we separated studies in three categories, as you can see here. Um, for studies on white populations, uh, the relative risk for type 2 diabetes was 16.28. Uh, for studies on uh, non-white populations, uh, the relative risk was 10.38. Um, and finally, for studies on mixed populations, the relative risk was 8.31. As you can see here, uh, the differences between the subgroups were not significant, while we observed a higher relative risk uh, for the studies in white populations. We also uh, performed subgroup analysis by study length of follow-up, where we separated uh, the studies by the length of follow-up. And we observed that for studies with up to five years of follow-up, the relative risk uh, for type 2 diabetes was 17. For more than five, with, for studies with more than five and up to ten years of follow-up, the relative risk was 10.42, and finally, for studies with over ten years of follow-up, the relative risk um, for type 2 diabetes was eight. Um, once again, no significant differences uh, observed between the different groups. Uh, however, uh, the relative risk of type 2 diabetes uh, appeared to be higher for the studies uh, with uh, the shortest duration. We also performed additional subgroup analysis by study design as defined by the studies themselves or by the screening method that was used in pregnancy to diagnose gestational diabetes as the different guidelines suggesting either a one-step or two-step screening method. We saw no significant differences by either study design or um, by uh, the screening method used uh, to diagnose gestational diabetes. To further understand the impact of both ethnicity and the study length of follow-up um, on uh, type 2 diabetes incidence, we separated um, the incidence of type 2 diabetes uh, for gestational diabetes and controls. Uh, 
uh, as you can see here in this table, uh, the cumulative incidence uh, for type 2 diabetes uh, was higher in a mixed or non-white population for both women with gestational diabetes and controls. And these results could be partially explained by the longer follow-up um, in the studies assessing mi mixed populations, as you can see here. For study length of follow-up, um, the cumulative incidence in uh, women with gestational diabetes was 9% in the studies with the shortest duration, steadily increasing up to 16% for the studies with the longest duration. In the control group, uh, the cumulative incidence reached up to 1.90% for the studies with the longest duration. Um, in this um, table, which is included in the manuscript as well, you can see the number of studies contributing to each uh, of the groups, as well as the mean study length and range, and finally the cumulative incidence with 95 confidence intervals, um, are these columns at the end of the table. We also fitted meta-regression models to understand the um, um, if there are any associations between study level variables such as age, BMI, study publication year and length of follow-up on um, the risk for uh, type 2 diabetes. As you can see here, all the coefficients were close to one, indicating that there were no associations between um, these variables and the incidence of type 2 diabetes. At uh, this point, uh, it needs to be mentioned that uh, these are study level variables that uh, come from summary study uh, level characteristics. Um, so they're not very definitive of what happens in real life, and it's often hard to reach conclusions about any true associations by uh, just relying on study level variables. We also performed a sensitivity analysis where um, we wanted to see uh, how each of the studies affected the overall pooled estimate. When each of the included studies was omitted one at a time, the pooled estimate remained close to the observed estimate of 9.51, which uh, suggests that no individual study had a large influence on the pooled estimate. Um, also, uh, there was no indication of publication bias, as both uh, Bex and Eggers tests were statistically non-significant. So, to summarize, um, this systematic review and meta-analysis suggests that women with previous gestational diabetes are almost 10 times more likely to develop type 2 diabetes than those with a normal glycemic pregnancy. And the magnitude of this risk is consistent with previous evidence suggesting that the two conditions, gestational diabetes and type 2 diabetes, share common pathogenic mechanisms as well as risk factors. And these findings also suggest that gestational diabetes could potentially serve as a predictor for the future development of type 2 diabetes. This study had several strengths, so um, um, we included a substantial number of uh, recently published studies that assessed a large number of individuals, as you can see here, um, the number of uh, women with gestational diabetes and controls, this is the total number that was included in the analysis, and the long-term follow-up that ranged from one up to 25 years. As the guidelines for the screening, diagnosis and follow-up for women with gestational diabetes um, have changed over the last 10 years, while the overall prevalence of type 2 diabetes has increased, this review provided the most up-to-date results in contemporary populations. Some limitations of this research need to be acknowledged as well. So uh, first, we excluded studies that were not published in English due to re limited resources. Also, we could not explore the effect of either family history of diabetes or parity on the incidence of type 2 diabetes because um, these were not consistently reported by most of the studies. For the ethnicity of study participants, um, there was little information. Um, most studies did not report progression in ethnic subgroups, so studies had to be grouped using broad ethnic categories, as you saw in the first plot before. And this uh, might have led to a high uh, degree of heterogeneity. We had to use relative risks, as personal years of follow-up were not reported for every study. So um, it was not possible to uh, calculate the incident 
incidence rate ratios, which are a more accurate uh, measure uh, compared to the relative risks. It was hard to reach conclusions about the timing of type 2 diabetes onset by just relying on study level data. And the main sources of heterogeneity in our effect estimates uh, were not identified. We suggest that a more in-depth analysis could have been performed if individual patient data had been available. So in terms of the implications for both uh, clinical practice and future research, the substantially higher risk of type 2 diabetes in women with previous gestational diabetes that we identified is probably not surprising, considering both the poor postpartum screening uptake in this population and the lack of structured postpartum preventive care. Previous studies have suggested that uh, there are several barriers uh, to screening uptake, including uh, poor communication between patients and clinicians, poor communication between primary and secondary care, particularly in the UK, um, a lack of awareness of the subsequent risk of type 2 diabetes uh, due to poor patient education, and finally, time restrictions due to maternal duties. These findings have the potential to increase awareness in both patients of the need to attend postpartum screening and in healthcare professionals of the need to uh, use patient-centered strategies to improve screening uptake. We suggest that future research could further investigate the timing of onset of type 2 diabetes using individual patient data to provide a more accurate estimate of time. Um, there's also a need for more up-to-date large randomized controlled trials that will investigate the effectiveness of preventive interventions for type 2 diabetes in women with gestational diabetes, looking at ethnically diverse populations and uh, longer follow-up is also needed. And finally, um, the cost effectiveness of interventions needs to be considered so that um, their adoption can be uh, promoted across uh, different healthcare systems across the world. So the take home messages of this research is that women with gestational diabetes have a nearly tenfold high risk of developing type two diabetes compared to those with a normal glycemic pregnancy. Um, it is uh, urgently needed that um, uh, postpartum screening um, needs to be promoted and um, interventions, um, women need to be uh, encouraged to adopt interventions to prevent or delay the onset of type 2 diabetes. And finally, um, there is a need for future studies that will examine strategies to improve screening uptake and to evaluate um, the cost effectiveness um, for preventive interventions. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, my contact details are provided at the bottom of this slide and I will be happy to answer any questions.